All right, here we go. Dungeon Master Tips, part three. Hey, Lugard here. On this channel, I create weekly D&D videos with resources and information designed to help Dungeon Masters run awesome games. So if you're looking to level up your D&D game, roll a crit on that subscribe button down below. Now in this video series, we are marching through a whole crap load of Dungeon Master tips that the awesome folks over on Reddit helped compile for me. Now if you want to watch this video series from the very beginning, which I recommend, then I will put a link up in the card to the very first video in the series. All right, enough of that. On with the show. Number 21, encourage your players to learn to play their own PCs. And honestly, I shouldn't even have to give this tip, but I have been in enough games where players never really learn how to run their PCs even after months or maybe even years of playing that yeah I, I gotta give this tip because here's the thing as the DM you have the entire world to run and manage and know how to play your players have one character each so I would try to keep the prompting of character abilities and what their PCs can actually do to a very minimum what their PCs can actually do should be on your players. If you help them out too much, then they'll become spoiled and they'll just expect you to do it all the time. Number 22, remember the clock is always ticking. This could also be stated as having points of no return in your adventures. And what I mean by this is that players love taking long rests. If you allow them to, they will take a long rest after every single combat just to make sure that they are at full strength. Build your adventures or run them in such a way that there are restrictions on the number of short rests and long rests they can take. The clock is always ticking. You're not going to straight up tell them, no, you can't take a long rest right now. But if they take eight hours to take a long rest, well, everything in your world is continuing to progress. Do they want to take an eight hour long rest partway through a dungeon? Great. Well, the orc chieftain finds all of the dead bodies and reinforces the dungeon with twice as many orcs. And then when the PCs come back, the entire dungeon is on alert. Number 23, get feedback from your players. Do you want to become a better DM? Well, your players have the answers. Every so often at the end of a game session, go around the table asking them two questions. The first one, what was something about today's session or a session in the past that you really liked and would love to see more of? Two, what was something that you didn't like and could be improved? Also, use anonymous feedback mechanisms like SurveyMonkey. It's free and it allows players to tell you things that they might not otherwise tell you in person. Hey, real quick, let me know down in the comments how you usually get feedback from your players. Number 24. Keep the game moving. Pacing is very important in the game and you especially want to try to move past things that are gonna keep your game in like ruts and stagnant and not going anywhere. For instance, rules debates are infamous for bringing game sessions to grinding halts. When something is in question, briefly listen to all sides and make a quick ruling and let your players know that you're going to investigate more offline and you'll make a final ruling and let them know about it. Otherwise, the game bogs down, cell phones start coming out, players start building towers out of their dice and you'll know you've lost them at that point. Number 25, remember that you create the problems and players create the solutions. It is perfectly fine to have problems or puzzles that have predefined solutions. However, also consider allowing there to be more than one correct answer. You might even walk into something without even really having a solution and then just deciding to roll with something that your players think up. The thing is, from the player's perspective, it feels really crappy to come up with this awesome elaborate plan and then have the DM just kind of shrug it off and say, no, sorry guys, that, that just doesn't work. Sometimes just let yourself go along with it, even if it wasn't what you decided the solution was going to be. Maybe not every time, but you know, sometimes. All right, now before we move on to the next one, I wanna take a brief moment to do a shameless plug because shameless plugs pay the bills around here. In addition to making all of these videos, I also publish adventures over on DriveThruRPG. If you are looking for a way to support the channel or just say thank you for all the videos, they are a great way to do just that. Not only will you be throwing me a few bucks, but you'll also get a DD and d adventure out of it. If you're interested in that, I will put a link down in the description to my DriveThruRPG publisher page. All right, there we go. The plug is is done. So number 26, homebrewing. Be careful. Now I totally get that people are really excited to create their homebrew things like magic items and races and classes and whatnot, but there are some pitfalls to be wary of. 
First, remember game balance. I'm gonna spitball here and throw out a statistic that I made up on the spot and say that about 80% of homebrew magic items that I read are vastly overpowered. And what I mean by that is the creator will say that it's an uncommon item, for instance, but it's actually more on par with an artifact. And then the creator will go on to say that he created it for his level two adventuring party. Now, if you're gonna homebrew things, that's totally cool. I understand the excitement of creating homebrew magic items and races and classes and all that good stuff. But my advice to you is to use the existing magic items and stuff in the DMG or the player handbook for like races and classes as a reference to guide you in that creation process. Otherwise, you run the risk of introducing something that could cause problems later on down the line. This is why over on Facebook, I'm constantly reading threads about people who are like, help, I gave my party X item and they're totally out of control. What do I do? And I'm not knocking Facebook and I'm not knocking people who cause their own problems and then don't know how to solve them. Okay, maybe I am, just a, just a little bit. Number 27, balance the story with the game. You are not a novelist and your players are not actors. There's a game in there somewhere. So don't get too carried away with the story. Remember that most of your players are also there to play a game. If your players wanted to sit there and just listen to you tell a story, they'd go read a book. No, your players want to participate in the game and become part of telling that story, both through their characters' words and actions. Number 28, let your players shine. Design challenges that give each of your players an opportunity to do something really awesome and help the entire group, something that lets them shine and show how cool they are. If there is a barbarian who loves combat, then make sure there's something to smash each session. Got a bard who loves sweet talking NPCs? Awesome, give him NPCs to Sweet talk. Number 29, it is okay when players leave your game. Don't feel bad, it happens. It is not necessarily a comment on your ability as a dungeon master. These things happen. Sometimes a player just loses interest in a game or maybe a player isn't a good fit for that group. The fact of the matter is, as a dungeon master, you can't please everyone. Now the upside of players leaving your game is that the players who stay are the ones that are truly having fun and your game will be better because of it. Of course, if all of your players are leaving, then you might want to take a moment of self-reflection. Number 30, toward the end of a game session, ask your players what they plan on doing next. Doing this helps you prepare for that game session. For instance, if they tell you that they're going to go to X and X town over here and do that or capture that villain or go fight this guy, well then you know where they're going, what they're planning on doing, and you can flesh that out and put interesting things in that part of the world for them to encounter. And until next time, I forgot. <laughs>